Alrighty, you guys, let's blow through this quickly. So let's do pros first. So what I will say, because it's hard to like listen to people online, I think sometimes negativity is so much louder than positivity is. So I really like thoroughly want to give you your list and you can decide if you want to go. Um, but for me, the biggest draw like draw of this festival, which it still always will be, is the music and the lineup. Like you, you really cannot beat the talent that they book for this festival and the range it, they have because they have different stage takeovers. So there was a whole hard dance takeover this year for the first time ever on Sunday. You had in a state of trance takeover. You have resistance, which is all the fucking house and techno that you need. You have the live stage. So you're going to get live acts. You had like Maddie on do like the most insane production. You had sudden death void. Oh my God, I forgot to talk about void. You guys, <laughs> You had sudden death void levitating in the fucking air. Okay, let's pause real quickly. I totally forgot. I saw sudden death void on Friday, which I said I would literally never do that over my dead body. But I had gotten chicken fingers and French fries and the friends that I was going to go to the other sets with hadn't gotten there yet. And BB and her other friends were going to void. And I was like, fine, there are chairs there. So I will sit down and I will watch the intro to void. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. If you know me, you know me. It was like summoning the devil to hell. It was fucking wild. Like from a perspective, like I respect the hell out of him, by the way. Danny is an awesome person. Like I think it's incredible that he's built this whole brand for himself. It's just not my cup of tea. It scared the shit out of me. It was way too dark. I was like out of there so fast. So I did, you should be proud of me. I did go for like two songs and the people who were there who were were loving it. But the minute like the background started turning red and it was like a portal to hell, I was like, absolutely not. Get me the fuck out of this (laughs) demon music. So anyway, it was a good time, but I left. So music and lineup, like you really can't beat. And the production, like, the production there's I don't know how to say it other than like ultra is one of the most iconic brands in the world and seeing the main stage like is a bucket list thing that I think you should do one time at least because it's incredible and the resistance stage like I said the production if you went to EDC Las Vegas and you saw Neon Garden this year Neon Garden was way bigger but the production at Carl Cox's megastructure is like fucking at least eight times better like insomniac needs to get to that level eventually but they're getting there so anyway production 100 percent a pro really fucking fire although they did have a couple of those sound issues Uh, my third pro for ultra miami is the weather absolutely beautiful i'm a sucker for hot weather it was like 80 degrees and sunny like 75 every day pool pool weather was perfect love the hell out of all that so the weather like is a huge selling point for this festival um Miami Music Week I'm putting this as a pro like I said I will go back to Miami Music Week every single year whether I work in the industry or not um those events themselves I just like where I'm at in my life and like how the crowd was I really would rather just do pool parties and after parties all week and like go to the beach and hang out so Miami Music Week is the fucking best. Do not sleep on that. Make sure you leave time to do that if you go. Um, Another pro, relatively easy to get to. So like I said, other than leaving the festival, which we'll chat about, um, getting there was super easy from Mid Beach. It took about 20 minutes. I think one day we hit a little bit of traffic, but other than that, super quick Uber. Those Ubers were not expensive going there. Um, I had friends this came in clutch for us but a friend of ours was in walking distance so that's really nice if you guys can literally stay with a friend or something or be in walking distance even better Um, I put great food for the most part I didn't get to eat too much but everything I did eat I did really really like and it was worth the money Um, I ate my favorite meal I had these like Vietnamese it was like a noodle bowl with chicken teriyaki and it was one of the best things I ate all week and I'll pop a video of it up in here fucking delicious um another pro like I said the press area was run extremely well most insane thing I've ever seen like literally being on a mega yacht um doing happy hour and Tiesto was standing five feet from me like it was the most surreal experience of my life so the press area was really well run um I love the fashion at ultra I put that as a pro like this is very ravey people get very very into it um I think everybody went all out they looked fantastic it was really really fun so yeah that was definitely a pro um 
And I think that's pretty much everything I had. So cons on the flip side, um, the biggest con, in my opinion, of Ultra is the crowd. And it's not everybody, of course. But for the most part, the crowd at the main stage is awful. It's awful. And I'm just going to say it because it is. The majority of people, I'd say 90%, push and shove you and don't say anything. So fucking rude. Shove you out of the way. No excuse me. Absolutely nothing. In and out of the crowd. Like we literally, I saw so many people getting into like fights. Um, I don't know what it is. I really don't. I don't know if it's people's age there you know you can't even blame it on like where you're from like who fucking knows but the crowd is awful and that's why I avoided main stage unless I absolutely had to be there because the crowd there was the absolute fucking worst and it gets so crowded so I did not have as many issues at the resistance Carl Cox stage or the resistance cove stage even the live arena not bad at all it also kind of depends on the artist you're seeing too um when you go to a big, big headliner like Hardwell or Tiesto, they're very commercialized because everybody knows them because they're very mainstream. So you get a mix of people who may not be ravers, may not know fucking anything about Plur. So that's the thing. It's like a very commercialized festival. So you're going to get a big mix of people, um, you know, versus like the house and techno crowd were a little bit more cool, even at Sudden Death Void. No problem there. Sophie Tucker set great, great mix of people. So it can be tricky um, when you get to that kind of stuff. The lines. Oh, God, I could pop off about this. The lines were so fucking awful for everything. Everything. Water. There were definitely not enough water refill stations, by the way. Water. Bathrooms. The bathroom lines were terrible. Drinks. Food everything there was not enough of everything like they need to make get a bigger move to a bigger space or get more of everything because like insomniac would never there it, there were just so many areas that I was like they need double the bathrooms double the food double the drinks like that really really irked me um the bathrooms were also fucking disgusting so the ones that were like indoors they had a couple that were like in stalls those were fine but the porta potties near the resistance Carl Cox mega stru- structure were not cleaned. I never had toilet paper in a single one of them. There was literally shit all over the bathroom. Like it was fucking disgusting. So I don't think they cleaned the bathrooms. Um, the, another huge con is the price point. I did not pay for my festival ticket because it was a press pass. However, Ultra is usually over $500 and I believe VIP is over $1,000. So for what you're paying and what you're getting it does not match up I'm sorry but yes the music and production are incredible but the if the experience and the overall atmosphere doesn't match it the price point is insane to me um like I said the volume of the stages some of them like had some sound issues and I think that's like a new noise ordinance thing um uber prices after the festival are extremely tricky because again if you don't leave early you're fucked like you're gonna be one of my friends waited almost an hour for an uber on sun on saturday night so what we ended up doing like i said is we would walk to our friend's apartment and we would hang out for like a 34 45 minutes and then we'd call an uber to her apartment so that was like what we ended up doing a lot of the nights to avoid like any crazy traffic I'm so sorry if this is so negative. (laughs) This is like my pop off section, but I'm going to be honest with you and I don't care um, because you need to know the truth and I'm going to share my experience with you. So the fan clacking. Oh my God, I have this as a con. The amount of fucking fan clacking I heard this festival, you guys. Again, I think there's just so many people who aren't really like in the scene, but they were clacking and it was driving me up a fucking wall. So that was awful. Um, Crowd control issues. So there were there was one instance that was really scary in between the Carl Cox Carl Cox mega structure and the live arena there is a walkway that kind of like goes up and around this bend and it's can be narrow when you have a lot of people so in between us leaving Sophie Tucker to go to the Carl Cox hybrid set we literally got stuck and like basically smushed like sardines into this walkway and it was terrifying like you literally couldn't even move everyone was shoving people were shoving through the crowd like there was no crowd control it was terrifying I was like if I have claustrophobia I would be dying right now so that was really scary there were a couple of areas where like the crowd was just like overwhelming so that was a little scary um 
And then, like I said, <laughs> I put the man talking on main stage. You guys know what I'm talking about. I, I think it's like a part of the ultra culture. And I think I think he obviously like either owns ultra or works for ultra. But there's a man who gets on the microphone and does like emceeing in between sets. And I hated it. Um, and then the only other thing is like the South Beach curfew. So because like spring breakers were so bad in South Beach and there were a couple shootings literally days before um, certain areas of South Beach were completely like closed down like after midnight. Um, so that did affect some of the shows, which was shitty. So one of the shows like I was supposed to go to was going to be at this club called Treehouse, but they couldn't do it there anymore. So they moved it to 1-800-LUCKY in Wynwood. So there are definitely like issues with the city that Ultra has um, that make things difficult. So I'm pretty sure I think I hit on everything, you guys. I know this is a very long episode, a very long review, but I wanted to make sure I covered everything. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,